Welcome. Thanks for coming today. Um, you know, this is, I like to say, this is a, a, an increasingly rare thing that people get together in person for common purpose. <laughs> you know, I guarantee you that if we weren't doing this today, two thirds of us would somehow or another be looking at a screen. You know, <laughs> wouldn't be doing this in person. My name is Clay Eels. I, um, <laughs> it's better to be a has-been than it never was, and so I got a lot of has-been in me. I, I used to be the director of the Historical Society here in West Seattle, and uh, uh, have been involved in West Seattle stuff for decades. I, I was editor of the Herald back in uh, the mid-80s, uh, from 83 to 88, right about the time that the bridge opened. Mm -hmm. um, and did a lot of coverage of the bridge. In fact, I'm giving a little talk at the Historical Society picnic this Sunday, the day the bridge reopens. Mm -hmm. If you're at all interested, come on down to the museum um, at, at lunchtime, and it's a great little picnic. And we did a, a book called West Side Story back mm -hmm. in the 80s. That was the first history book of West. How many of you got a copy of that or seen it? Yeah, some of you do. Um, West Seattle is just a fascinating, fascinating place to, to get to know. And, and the, the secret of West Seattle is once you're here, you're never going to leave because it's so appealing. Um, and I, I sort of come by my street cred uh, naturally. My mom was born and raised in West Seattle uh, and up, uh, just across from Hiawatha Playfield. And so as a kid, I was over here all the time uh, visiting my grandparents, and I just loved it. And uh, um, to morph into the topic of the murals, when I was editor of the Herald, um, that was right at the time that the historical society here was starting. We didn't have a, the museum. We hadn't acquired that yet. Our home was South Seattle Community College, it was named at the time. And uh, I was editor of the paper. And you know, when you're a journalist, you're not supposed to get involved in stuff. You're supposed, to, you know, you're not, you're not in. You're, you're kind of apart from what's going on, and you're reporting on it, you know. But the one area I couldn't help getting involved in was the historical society, and and we uh, we got a phone coming in. Uh, there we go. Um, and when we. Um, when, when the Historical Society formed, um, that was Elliot Cowden. Some of you may remember that name. He founded it in 84. And um, I quit the Herald in 88, thinking I was going to become a teacher, a uh, high school teacher. And, and I had five and a half weeks of vacation built up. And I took my bicycle to London. And I rode all around England on my bike. And I came back, and they'd elected me president historical site. So beware that that's the way to get involved in something is to go out of town. <laughs> and uh, right in that era, the, the, the time that we, that, that, that I, uh, my last year or so with the Herald, and then starting with the Historical Society, that's when the murals of West Seattle began. And you can see all 11 of them here. Um, and they are the result of the work of this man, Earl Cruzen. Earl was a local legend around here. Um, he was a businessman. He was chair of the Junction Development Committee. But really, it's appropriate that his last name, or his first name, rather, uh, rhymes with murals, because he's sort of the father of the murals here in, uh, in, in West Seattle. And they didn't just happen overnight. This was a a years-long process, and even before uh, he had the idea to put murals on the walls, um, he and his then-wife Virginia, and a couple they were friends with, Mo and Bonnie Bierman, would take vacations together. How many of you have been down to the southwest Washington coast, Long Beach, Il Waco, that area? <laughs> you may have noticed that they have some spectacular murals on their walls. And this was something that these couples really, you know, their Cruzans and the Biermans really revered. And, they, and it sort of sparked uh, a notion in their mind um, about how to dress up a community. And these murals 
told the history. One, the one that I love the best, it's still there in Long Beach. It's this giant horizontal mural showing cranberry picking. Um, I don't know if it, that rings a bell for any of you, but if you're on a trip down to Long Beach in Ilwaco, don't miss the murals. There are about a half dozen of them. And the friends of the Cruzans, the Biermans, Mo was a commercial sign painter. So Mo Bierman was particularly enamored of this, this public art aspect. And then they took a trip to a little town up north called Chimenez. And I passed these booklets around at the beginning. Um, let's see. That's the cover of one of these. Um, and these booklets are produced by this town of Chimenez. Has anybody here been to Chimenez? It's, it's even hard to pronounce uh, if you don't know it. It's, it. You might think it's pronounced some other way, but it's a, it's a tiny town. It used to be a logging town uh, up north of Victoria. It's about an hour's drive of Victoria on, on north on uh, Vancouver Island. And it's just north of a town that you probably do know because of their candy, the Nanaimo buyers. Any of you know Nanaimo up in BC? This is well worth a visit. But what Chimanus did as a town, you know, their, their, their logging industry died, it just dried up, you know, as, so, as logging did in so many small towns uh, around Canada and, and in the US, and they decided they needed to do something to, to, so that their town wouldn't die. And their, their slogan here says, <laughs> the little town that did cross the top. And I always like to uh, insert the letter E in here. They prevented it from being the little town that died. What they did was they contacted and hired world-class muralists to come tell the history of their community, particularly the logging story, but also the native story and uh, some of the leaders of their town over time. And so automatically, Earl thought, and Mo and, and Virginia and Bonnie, they thought, we can do this in West Seattle. And they ended up using uh, some of the muralists who uh, painted in Chimanus. They became the sort of the core of the contacts that Earl made. Now this is a map you can probably recognizes of, of the junction. And the murals of West Seattle are concentrated in the junction. They're not all in the junction. One is over here um, by uh, what they, they call the Fontlory Triangle now. Um, and then one is down here at Morgan Junction. But most of them are here. They didn't all happen at once. They happened one by one by one. And what Earl did, he basically was looking for two things. He was looking for blank walls and money. <laughs> because there was no, this was not a government program or a grant funded program or uh, this was, a, a, the Junction Development Committee was, they would raise money to pay a muralist to come in. But the muralist had to have a wall to work with and so you needed money to pay the muralists, and you needed the blank wall somewhere. And there were plenty of them around here. And so Earl had to, um, he, he was kind of the Pied Piper of this. And he had to not only um, tell the public about the value of the murals, but he also had to convince property owners that, hey, this would be a really cool thing to have on the wall of your building. And this is the same map. Um, and these are the names of the muralists who uh, Earl eventually hired. And uh, a couple of them did two of our murals, but most of them did just one. Now, we can look back and say, this is a great big package. But it didn't happen all at once, as I said. They happened one by one. And imagine if you're starting a project, you don't know how it's going to end. Um, so he started with this wall. Now, this is behind US Bank and Pharmaca. Um, you all know where that is? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to be taking a tour around the junction, but it's not going to be linear. It's going to jump around. This was the first mural that was done. Um, and like I said, and you can see part of the Easy Street Records building over here. 
Um, this was a collage. Earl's idea was to tell the story of West Seattle, the history of West Seattle through these murals, and to do it with historical photos, with actual photos. These are not made up images, these are painted from photos of the time. And I was president of the Historical Society then, and so I was on Earl's committee, and I was responsible for getting him the photos that, that were used as the basis of this. And I'm, I'm kind of the only one left, the only one left standing. Everybody else involved with this project is gone, except Bonnie is still around, Bonnie, Bonnie Bierman. Um, and th this, in talking with Earl about this, we, we kind of came up with this conclusion that, that, that even if we just did one mural, the theme of transportation would be most compelling. Because, it, you know, I mean, you can get philosophical about this, but just at the top level, West Seattle is all about transportation. You all have a right hand, right? Stick your right hand up in the air and put it out in front of you and look at the back of your hand. Well. The rest of your hand is the rest of Seattle. West Seattle is the thumb, okay? And the whole story of West Seattle is how do you get from the thumb to the hand, you know? And so transportation is very much key to the history of our peninsula. And really, if you think about it, transportation is, is life. It's life itself. Like, if we just stand here and we don't walk or move or drive or bike or anything, we die. You know, transportation is movement. We go from one place to another. So this was a really fitting theme for the first mural. And this is the, well, I'll, I'll get to this. This is how it looks today. It's quite beautiful. Um, and the, the, uh, the collage works pretty well. It starts with the first ferry boat on Puget Sound. This had its maiden voyage on Christmas Eve of 1888. And this is the ferry that's called the City of Seattle. And this is taken from a photograph where it's coming from downtown Seattle over to uh, the foot of Ferry Avenue. In fact, you can still see the piling sticking up out of the water um, just south of where the water taxi is today and marination. Um, just beautiful colors on this, particularly the, the flag shows up. Um, this is another view of the ferry coming into the dock. Um, notice that everybody's all dressed up, you know. This is in the, from photo from uh, 1891. Um, little sidelight, when, uh, when I first met Paul Dorpat, I do the now and then column in the Seattle Times now. Any of you read the Seattle Times with the Sunday Magazine? Yeah, well you'll see me in there every other week. We, Sir Gene Chard and I've taken it over from Paul, who was retired from the column, but he did it for 37 years. And I went and met him in 1983 when we were doing a, a special section at the Herald called Bridging the Gap. And I said, you know, I keep hearing about this West Seattle ferry called the City of Seattle. Do you have a photo of it? And Paul goes into his drawer and he pulls out a two and a quarter by two and a quarter negative with a little rip on the top. And he says, here. <laughs> He didn't know me from Adam. He, he said, just get it back when you're done. I mean, Paul was and is a great guy, and it was a big help to our effort to get historical photos um, for the Herald, for the West Side Storybook, and for the murals. Now, the city of Seattle Ferry didn't serve all by itself uh, forever. It needed to be augmented, and so there was a new ferry called the West Seattle that came along in 1907. And so this is on the mural. And then once you got over to West Seattle, how did you get around, you know? It's hard to think of a time when there are no cars, you know, or very few cars. To have a car was a big deal. Plus, when you think about uh, today, the, you know, going over the bridge, and you look down on Harbor, Ave Harbor Island and Georgetown and, and all of that, that wasn't there. It was mud flats. It was you, you. You could drive around if you went way south and came back north. But, but, uh, and then there were trestles that came across over the years, and fledgling bridges. And that's a whole other story. But once you got here, 
to get around, you needed the streetcar. So this is a representation of a West Seattle streetcar. And then when, once you were here, what did you do? You would go to Luna Park. <laughs> Luna Park was the huge amusement park down at the Duwamish Head. There's a little anchor park now where it used to be. You all know where that is? Yeah. OK. And so this is a view of Luna Park from the, from the water with, with a couple in the foreground. It's just made a great collage here of transportation-related items. Well, can I ask, what, was the Mosquito Fleet involved with Yes, Mosquito? and we're going to get to that. Oh. You're good. You're way ahead of me. That's great. Um, now, this is a little sidelight. This is the same mural, but look at it. It's all faded out. Earl, um, Earl died a few years back, um, and his second wife, his first wife, died, and so he married Ada Cruzen, and Ada, as his widow, was in charge of his estate. And she was distressed at how the weather had really damaged the murals over time. And you can see, this is a wall that faces west, and you can imagine the sun setting in the west, so the, just the powerful rays of the sun fading everything out to the point where there is no red in the flag. I mean, the whole thing is faded. So Ada, um, <laughs> the way she put it was, Earl left me a few extra zeros. <laughs> and she, she started she, uh, a fund with the Junction, uh, West Seattle Junction Association to restore the murals. And this was the, one of the first to get restored. And so um, the original was by Bill Garnett. I remember him painting that, being up on the roof and going down painting it. And then, and Mo was the assistant. Mo is a story all by himself. He was a commercial sign painter and just a great, great guy. But, and it's funny given that I'm blabbing along here, but Mo could not stop talking. He was a talker. And I've got to step back here about this mural process and explain that when a muralist came, it wasn't like the muralist came to town and poof, the next day the mural was on the wall. It took weeks, sometimes two months, for the mural to get up based on weather and based on the complexity of the project. And that was the beauty of this, and it's the beauty in Chimaneus too, that, that, that they would bring muralists in in the summer and you could just walk up to the muralist and start talking to the muralist and say, well, why isn't that cover? Or, or tell me, how come you're doing this? Or this is a great job. And the muralists like that interaction, but it's also hard to get work done <laughs> when people are interrupting you all the time. And so Mo became the, the go-between. He would talk to anybody. And so Mo was assisting every muralist who came to town. I should let you know that, that this became a, a five-year project to get these murals up from 89 to 93. So we're talking about a five-year period to get these 11 up. And then Bob Henry, the local mural artist, is the one who was hired to refresh the mural. And, and so it's we have him to thank for being able to see it in its full glory today. Of course, it's going to fade eventually, too. But, um, you know, the, the, the restoration is, is, a, is a great effort, and you'll see in these slides um, the results of some restoration, and then the results of some that are not yet restored and that really need it. And I'm going in the order, the murals, in the order in which they were painted. So again, it's just like zigzagging around the junction. This one is called the junction. Um, it has not been restored. It really needs it. It once was as vibrant as the one I just showed you. And I think this is Eric Groey created this. And this is my favorite of the 11. Because you can't really tell just sitting here. If we were out touring today, um, you would see that the as you move, the mural appears to move. Because it is the only mural in the collection that is painted with what's called single point perspective. And artists among you may understand what that is. And I'll show you in a minute where that single point is. But what this depicts is there's an archway. It's not a real archway. It's just painted on there. 
and this is looking north along California Avenue at the very same place as you are standing looking at this wall, which used to be Junction Feet and Seed, and now it's a yoga, Bikram Yoga. And you're looking north, and this is the East Street building, and this is the Campbell building. And where is the mural? The mural is on the south side of the old Junction Feed and Seed, now Bikram Yoga. Um, do you know where you can do the drive-through to go to Chase Bank? It's, it's a, close to Edmonds Street. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. This is in that parking lot. Now, so here's the Ham Building, which we made, got uh, designated a landmark in 2017. You may remember that big campaign we did. Um, this, this building and the Campbell Building can never be torn down now. These are the, among the two earliest commercial buildings in the junction. And here is the single point. <laughs> and I'll go back to the big. Everything, all the perspective lines converge here. And because of that convergence, when you move, the mural appears to move with you. It's just, it's. It's, you, you could say it's kind of scary, but it's, it's just fun. I think it's great. So the other day I decided I needed another photo to really put this in perspective. And you're asking, where is it? You can see now, here's, here's the building, and there, here's the drive through to the bank. Uh, um, and then here's California Avenue. And if you stand right here, you look left and you see the mural and you look right and you see what the mural depicts. It's it's a perfect match of, of content for its location. It's too bad that it's hidden by the greenery though. It's one of the issues of mural, mural is, is you know, cutting back the greenery. You know, I, I alluded earlier to, you know, he went, he was going for blank walls and money. Well, these murals, who did they belong to? They belong to the property owners whose walls they're painted on. And some property owners are better at keeping it up than others. I agree with you. I mean, this this is obscuring most of the car that's in the foreground, and you can hardly see the woman with the umbrella. Eric painted his wife into the face of the umbrella woman, by the way. Um, this is an even more fascinating story. Um, for many people, Midnight Call was their favorite mural. You're saying, where the hell is the mural? This is uh, the Don Swanson Insurance Company building on 44th Avenue, uh, across from the parking lots for the junction. Um, it would be near West Seattle Associates. It's not right on the corner, but it's, it's just down from the corner of Alaska on 44th, on the west side of the street. And you can see these stanchions here. Um, some murals were painted like, like the junction mural that I just showed you, were painted on the wall. Um, some were created on a piece of, of, of board and affixed to the wall. This was one that was fixed to the wall, and here's what it looked like. Some people loved this mural the best because it was 3D. This mural, and, and first of all, it's called Midnight Call because it is depicting the old West Seattle fire station that was across the street where there's a parking lot in the junction now, the parking lot behind Key Bank. And it's a midnight call because it's colored blue and it's got a moon out there shining the way. And this is the time of horse-drawn fire wagons. And so this part is painted on a piece of, or was painted on a piece of board. And then this part with the engine and the horses was painted on a separate piece of board that stuck out from the wall. So it made it a 3D effect. It felt like the horses were charging at you or past you. And that made it unique. However, the, uh, the, the Swanson family, I don't think Don is, is, is around anymore, but, but his family who inherited the building um, what I understand is that within the family there was a difference in, of opinion 
about what to do about this mural because over time it faded. You can see that there's hardly any color in the horses and the wagon anymore. This, <laughs> this is no longer midnight blue. It's, it's gone to white. And some thought it was an eyesore. Some ought to be, uh, said, it, said that it ought to be uh, restored. And the, the, one day, you came to the junction, and this is what you saw. It was gone. So the people who, within the family who didn't like it obviously won. And you can still see the evidence of, of where it was. Um, so while it's no longer a mural, I had to show it to you. It was part of, it was the, the third one created. Uh, I, I, you know, you got to admit that there's a lot of imagination that went into this. Mosquito fleet. There you go. This is, the, I, all of these murals, except for one, was painted by a guy. This is the only one painted by a woman. Susan took Crichton. Um, and this is, does anybody here remember the Grace Fashion Apparel? The what? La Grace Fashion Apparel. There you go. <laughs> it's now, uh, uh, Bartels was in there for a while. Um, uh, it's it's now Cupcake Royale. Yeah. This is the Campbell Building, and this is the back of the Campbell Building that faces on the alley. And this is depicting the Mosquito Fleet. This is one of the restored murals. And Susan, when she was here, she the, the interesting thing was the shape of the building exceeded the proportion of the photo, and the photo cut off about right here, halfway in, in the middle of this, this guy's head. So she painted her son into the mural. <laughs> That's her son's face. And the mosquito fleet, do you want to tell us why it was called the mosquito fleet? No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. When, well, I would talk around. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You know, if, imagine a mud puddle and a bunch of mosquitoes. You know, do, do, do mosquitoes go back and forth on the same route on the mud puddle? No, they're, they're crazy all over the place. And that's what transportation on the sand was like before uh, the Washington State Ferry System uh, was created in 1952. It was a bunch of private operations who competed with each other to serve various ports around the sound, and those collectively became, you know, this bunch of busy bugs that we call <laughs> the, the mosquito fleet. So Susan painted this in 1990. We're already a year into it. This is summer of night, and Bob restored it. This is an unrestored mural. This is number five. I have a lot of affection for this mural um, because it is so vast, and there are some unique aspects of it. One of them is that it was done by the Dafford brothers of Louisiana. One Dafford brother, Robert, would be up on, on uh, a ladder and painting away. And the other one, Doug, was, he, he would be down below arguing with him. No, no, you've got to go over here. No, no, no. And, you, and to watch them argue with each other was as fun to, as seeing the mural go up. This is uh, on, off of the alley back here is where Husky Deli is, okay? And so we're looking to the south. This is facing north. And it's, it's called the first Duwamish Bridge, but it's really a panorama that imagines that if you were up on Pigeon Point, just like this faded couple here, this is what you would have seen, the, the mudflats. And this bridge was the first swing bridge. It's got a fascinating, I mean, it, it's hard to tell from this, but this is mud out here. There are no, there's you, no houses or buildings or streets or anything, and this is constructed across. And this part where the where the Duwamish River, a narrow portion of it was, they needed a bridge. It was a swing bridge. It it worked fine as a bridge, but it it it, it swung in the middle. You know, its pivot was in the middle, and the big problem with it was that going over. The bridge not only was traffic, but were uh, water lines. 
to West Seattle. So, so when the bridge was open, the, the water was cut off. <laughs> it was not a good design. <laughs> but the other thing about this, we've been seeing these murals go by, and you wonder, you may wonder, well, how is it that they were so accurate to the photos? Well, do you all remember um, uh, overhead projectors mm -hmm. from school? You know, where there would be a, an overlay and, and you could project it up on, on a screen. Well, the artists did a model of what they were going to uh, accomplish. And then out in the middle of the night, because it was too bright in the daytime, they'd go out in the middle of the night and shine it on the wall by overhead projector. And then that allowed them to ink in the boundaries of what they were going to paint during the day. Not this mural. This is the only mural that was painted totally freehand. And it's, I think it's the biggest one. And it's, it may not be the big, you know, I think it's, it's like the mud hole in terms of its width, but it's huge in its depth. Imagine doing this freehand and having it come out so realistically. <laughs> Obviously needs restoration. We've got the Dapper brothers, and again, assisted by Mo Beerman. All of, Earl made sure that every one of these had a plaque. Uh, they are quite weathered, but uh, you can find a plaque at each of these murals. Here is a, a, a detail of that bridge, and I've enhanced it in Photoshop a little bit to show how the, it's closer to what it originally was. <sighs> Number six, we're rounding, rounding second and heading home here. Uh, this is six out of 11. This is called the Morgan Street Market. You all know where this is located? Do you, um, where Starbucks is now at Morgan Street? And uh, Peel and Press, the pizza place, and Subway. This is behind that building, facing the parking lot, facing west. And this comes from a photo that we found in the Washington State Archives. Um, it's a wonderful uh, resource. It's the regional branch is headquartered at Bellevue College. Uh, used to be down at the Sunset Act, Sun, Sunset Junior High School, Little Sunset Junior High School in the Clear Zone, uh, down in North Burien. Um, and they have all of they have a, a myriad of records for our Puget Sound area. But the showcase collection they have is uh, back in the late 30s. The assessor figured out. The King County Assessor figured out that, that, that the assessments were not accurate for many properties. They were undervalued. So he ordered a survey of every property in the county and got some federal funding for that. And as part of the survey, people went out, hired by the county, to take a picture of every standing building in the county. From 19, it, it took them several years, 37, 38, 39. So imagine that as a historical resource. They used those, and, and let's say you, you built a house uh, in the 20s, and so there's a photo of your house in 1937, and then you put a dormer in. Well, that meant your house cost, it, it was assessed more, so they had to do another photo to document the fact that you had done that. So in some cases, some properties have three or four photos. They're prints, you know, little prints on a property record card. And, and today, it's a wonderful resource. They do everything by computer, and they stopped doing the photographs in the early 80s. But where did you where do you put all that collection? That went to the state archives. And this, this is based on a photo of the Morgan Street Market, which is now where West Seattle Thriftway is. So if you're standing looking at this, <laughs> the Starbucks building is in the way, but it is what you would have seen looking this way, uh, looking at the southeast corner of Morgan in California. And it was, it was an early day shopping center, as you can see. You know, different shops for different purposes, produce, et cetera, with a little Texaco gas station in the front. And the photo from the archives, it was, it was kind of blank. There were, there were no people in it. There were no, no cars. Um, so the muralist, uh, he um, populated it with cars and, and people. And this was the first mural to be restored under the Rat Mural Restoration Program. It's just a, it's just full of life. 
This is obviously Gatewood Hill up behind, and it's depicting Morgan Street Market from about 1937. Whoops. And just a, a, a bit of uh, detail, uh, he put Mo on the license plate. <laughs> That's of the red car here. This is painted on the building. Is this, and, is this in Morgan Junction? Yes, it's the only one outside of the Alaska okay. Junction. Um, but Earl found a, a blank wall and some money, so let's do it there. I mean, why not? And I was able to come up with a photo that fit the Morgan Street intersection. You know, we, we worked together on this. This one, I bet nobody in the room knows about because essentially it's gone. This is what it is today, but who remembers Hewing Brothers Buick? I mean, it was Auto Row there along Fauntleroy Way, and Steve Hewing wanted to get in on this mural stuff. Well, it's not quite the junction, it's several blocks downhill, but he wanted a photo uh, on his wall when that building stood uh, along Fauntleroy Way just to the south of Alaska Street. And I found in my mom's uh, collect photos just you know we all have photos like this where, where a photo was taken for a certain purpose somebody's in the foreground but what's really interesting is what's in the background well my mom had this photo that was taken up from Admiral Way um, about halfway down Admiral Way looking out over Alki um, and you can see the old natatorium in here and the bathhouse would have been over here anyway Steve said, okay, let's do that, but it's got to have a car in it. <laughs> so Bruce Ricketts painted a car in it, you know, and it's, and it's showing the woman painting the scene that you're seeing, and it's kind of clever. Well, Hugh and Buick, they sold out, uh, and that's now the, the building where the Whitaker is, you know, where the Whitaker, huge apartment complex with, her, with uh, um, uh, Whole Foods at the bottom as the anchor and some other businesses well when they were going through design review I you know time passes people's memories are, you know fade away and anyway I knew they were going to take take down this building and by that time this mural being on the wall it was facing the east the sunrise was terribly faded I don't have a photo of that to show you I, I I think I have it somewhere, but I couldn't find it. And I said, if you're going to tear it down, you know, it's not a question of, of preserving the mural, because the mural's in terrible shape. And in historical preservation terms, this, you know, a mural is not a, it's not an original primary artifact. It's a secondary one. It's a, it's a painting of an artifact, you know. So what we came up with as a compromise was that they would repaint it on a portion of the building. Mm -hmm. So they did. They fulfilled the promise. But this is really hard to find because it's off an alley on the back of the Whitaker building. Oh. If you know where the parking lot is for the Masonic uh, yeah. Hall, mm -hmm. you can barely see it up on the building. But they, I, I was there when when the artist was, was recreating this. So this is not the original mural. It's, you know, so I have mixed feelings about it. It's, it's okay, but nobody can see it. But it was number seven. Number eight, this is called Bank Day. And you probably are really familiar with it because this is the one that's closest to you right now. It's just across the street. This is on you know, California is here, the senior center is over here, and this is um, what's now known as Chase Bank. Now, and you can see how big it is given the perspective of somebody walking by with a mask on. <laughs> um, this comes from an original photo from the first site for Alki Elementary School, and you can see that it's Dated 1923, Miss Chilberg was the teacher there to, to honor, I think, the teacher at the first Alki school. 
there is a small side street just off of Beach Drive called Chilbert Street. Oh, I live near that. So that's where the, the school was before it was located on 59. And this was a big deal back then. It really was indoctrination, you know, to get to get uh, little kids involved in the capitalist system. You know, bank, stick your money in the bank. You know, that's where it's safe. I mean, and I'm not saying that's a bad message. It's just it's a message. And this what this is Chase Bank, but it was you may remember the financial collapse back in 2008. This was Washington Mutual. The friend of the family who didn't, turned out to be not so friendly, uh, and so this was a, a, a case of Earl uh, matching uh, money and a blank wall with a message. So these kids are lining up every Monday morning to, to deposit five five cents into their account or whatever. The Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday I'm sorry. Day. Sorry. And it's true. It was. You remember this. Oh, yeah. And Very it was good. Washington Mutual. Oh. And the head of the Washington Mutual board was Dietrich Schmitz. Schmitz family is all over West Seattle. Schmitz mm -hmm. Park, Schmitz School, Schmitz, a lot of things. And Joanne Schmitz Fulton, the grand niece, uh, is, is here in the photo. Mm -hmm. And she spoke at the opening ceremony. I videotaped all these ceremonies. Um, each mural had an opening ceremony with the muralist talking and Earl and anybody else related to the mural. So this is kind of fun. Um, the detail that it really makes me smile about this. And okay, here's the detail of the of the words. The most important feature of the system is that it teaches the child the regular habit of thrift. And this is the artist. Uh, Alan Wiley, he was, I would say, he was the funniest muralist. He had the best sense of humor. He loved working with Mo. And he create, he painted this on the side of the building as if it were a painting stuck on the building, but it's not. It's painted. And the, in, the illusion of that comes with all of these little cracks. And then the corner of the thing's turned up. <laughs> so that when you see the corner, you see his signature. But the most fun thing about this, um, is over here, he also signed his name, and there's something else. Did I get it? Where, where is it? Oops. Where is it? Oh, it's okay. just off at the bottom, um. Mira, that's okay. But Alan mischievously, he thought Mo was such a character that when Mo was a kid, he would have carved his name. <laughs> oh, I see it. Yeah, I it. So it says M O E. <laughs> Now, this one has been restored. If you go look for M-O-E, if you go look for M-O-E, it's not there. I think Bob Henry missed that. So I, I, I've been putting this together yesterday, but i got to call Bob Henry. Because Mo's name needs to be scratched in that desk. Okay. Um, yeah, and this indicates that it was repainted by Bob and Alan Wilde. This one is also close to you here. This is up on the post office building. And this is one of those optical illusion things. I just love it. Because here you can see the brick of the building, right? And you can see the post office sign up here. But it's on the side of the wall, and this is painted brick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's on this wall, and it's depicting the building that it's on. <laughs> it's just kind of crazy. And this is depicting a, 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 a Hayu parade. It's called the Hayu parade. Technically, Hayu people would say it's not the Hayu parade. It's the West Seattle Grand Parade that comes during the Hayu ceremony. And it's sponsored by the used to be the American Legion. Uh, now it's the Rotary Club. Uh, but it's it's one of those building within a building kind of things, and the photo depicted the theme of Hayu that year, which was the Wizard of Oz. So the Hayu float in the Grand Parade was the Wizard of Oz, and of course you can see the Tin Man and 
Dorothy and the Cowardly Lion and the Scarecrow. And the photo showed this coming by the post office. But there weren't any people in the photo. So Lanny Little, the muralist, said, well, that's easy to fix. When I'm painting the mural, I'll just commandeer people off the street and say, you want to be in the mural? Well, stand here for 10 minutes and I'll paint your face. And so all of these people are real people. Yeah, my dad's in that one. Uh -huh. Now, go back here. What's following the parade? It's a motorcycle with a sidecar. Riding in the sidecar is Normie Beers. He was in his time called Mr. West Seattle. He was for 30 years the director of the West Seattle YMCA. The next 20 years he was the director of the chamber. So there he is riding in the parade. This is Earl. And this is Virginia, his wife. This is Mo Beerman. And I don't know why I cut off Bonnie. I didn't mean to. But those are the real people in this. And Lanny painted his two kids in here. He did the original mural in 1992, and then he came back and spiffed it up. And this is just brilliant because these two kids are not in the picture. They're outside of the picture looking in, kind of waving. And to give them balloons also enhances that perception, that they're watching something from the past. It's, it's kind of cool. They and of course, Lanny, Lanny painted himself into the mural. Mm -hmm. it, it's been paint, repainted yet again. Yes. Yeah. yeah, well, there was a really bad spate of graffiti right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. um, just, just, I don't even want to talk about it. I know. But, but that, that was when it was redone mm -hmm. most recently. Okay, where are we? I don't know what's going on. Hmm. Mira, I need a miracle. Wow. Well. Can you move it along? OK, number 10, thank you. This one is so wide that I had to do a panorama photo of it for you, um, for you to have it um, make any sense. Um, it's called the old mud hole. Most of us know in Lincoln Park where Coleman Pool is. Okay. But before Coleman Pool was built in the 30s, as part of WPA, there was what was called the Mold Mud Hole. So this is the peninsula of Lincoln Park sticking out. And periodically, they would empty it into the sound because it would get contaminated from use. <laughs> but this is tr truly panoramic. Uh, these. These two girls are in the photo. All these people are, this is, this is really what it looked like. It's from a panorama photo from the Coleman family. The Coleman family from Laurentide and uh, the Fowler area was a lot to them. And setting it off is this guy in the foreground with the umbrella and these people over here. Um, and the location of this is um, off of 44th. It's facing north. I got to say, it's about halfway down. It's an apartment building, and, and it's on the north side of the building. Yeah. And this is what it looked like before. It, it, it was refurbished. There, there was somebody, uh, I should have looked this up. It's about three, four or five years ago. Somebody had painted an ice cream cone here. Like the girl was carrying an ice cream cone, and they did some other uh, impromptu modifications. <laughs> uh, so here's the guy in the umbrella. This could use refurbishing. Now, this is the last one, and I just put me in there. I've been doing mural tours for a while. And I put me in here so that you have a sense of scale. This is across the street um, from the Duwamish Bridge one. This is on 44th on the west side of the street on the building that used to be called West Seattle Associates. The West Seattle Associates used to put out the West Seattle phone book, which we don't, you know, our phones are the phone book. But this uses the same concept of outsiders looking into the mural, and it is a collage 
but it has a theme of journalism. Um, Warren Wallace, L-A-W-L-E-S-S, was a business leader at the time, Earl Cruzen was. He ran West Seattle Associates, but when he was younger, he worked for the West Seattle Herald, selling ads and doing everything. And he wanted to memorialize the West Seattle Herald. The founder of the West Seattle Herald is Ruth Hamilton. He's up here. He started the Herald in 1923. Some of you may not even know what the Herald was. We don't have a Herald anymore. We've got West Seattle Blog, which is great. They're phenomenal. But we used to have a newspaper. <laughs> I, I, it's like sometimes you have to explain things that you don't, <laughs> didn't used to. But Rupe uh, started the paper uh, 99 years ago, and then he suddenly died in 1939. And taking over was his assistant publisher, Clyde Dunn, and his wife. And this is an attempt to depict the, uh, the production of the paper from you know, the press work. And Warren had him paint in an early West Seattle business directory, which was his business. Um, and you can see it's quite faded. And in this case, um, to restore it, you, you can see that it's not painted on the wall. It's painted in sections on the wall. It's all the intersections here. Whoops. And so they took the sections on so that Bob could restore them. And this is what it looks like today. Now, we're done with all 11 murals, but I wanted to let you know that this is all, I mean, this may sound like hyperbole, but in the late 80s, early 90s, I would say we had history fever around here. And it was sparked in large part by the West Side Story history book. Um, there had never been a history done of West Seattle, and there were so many aspects to West Seattle history that were not only unique, but, but monumental. I mean, the first ferry on the Sound, the first city-owned streetcar system in the nation. Um, all of these things that, 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 I mean, part of it was to try to counter the notion that West Seattle kind of was, and, and you, you don't think of it today, but 30, 40 years ago, West Seattle was kind of forgotten. Any map of Seattle, sometimes they would just cut off West Seattle. They would never, it, 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 I know ge we're still geographically separated, but I think we're a lot more prominent now with political office holders from here and other aspects of West, you know, some would say the, the music scene with Eddie Vedder and Pearl Jam and that kind of thing. But West Seattle was kind of a forgotten backwater, and so we were trying to, to, uh, you know, raise up the history of the area. And with the publication of West Side Story, which was a 288-page book that got plopped on your doorstep, if you subscribe to the Herald, you got a free book. Uh, 14,500 people got a free soft cover book. After that, you know, the murals started taking off. And as part of that, not, not formally a part of it, but, but um, there were other grant-funded art projects, including for what Metro decided to create in the junction as the West Seattle Transit Center. And they wanted the Transit Center to, um, to reflect the theme of where it was. Well, do you guys know why the junction is called the junction? Mm -hmm. It's because of this is where Alaska and California is where the two major streetcar lines in West Seattle came together in 1907. And so it was the junction of the two. So here on the top of the bus, uh, what do you call them? <laughs> the shelters, thank you. Why won't? More and more, I can't, I can't, I can't get the word. <laughs> on top of the bus shelters, these are done by an artist to um, raise up the, the fact that, that uh, this was the junction of two streetcar lines. And these are sort of, this is the electricity from them, right? So when you go, when you walk through that block, look up, these are still there, they're pretty cool. And then look down where you sit in the bus shelters and you will see 
full, these are metal relief versions of West Seattle Herald front pages of major news events. And you may just miss it walking by, but don't miss it. And then a few years later, Leslie Jane is a long time, you know, she's a West Seattle born artist. Um, she created Constellation Park, she created West Weather Watch Park down along Beach Drive. Um, the building across from the Campbell Building that now has Starbucks in it, and it's a high rise, that used to be a two floor building where a lot of people, uh, and some still alive, were born at West Seattle Hospital on the second floor. And that later became a, a electric, you know, like, uh, like a TV shop, and then a, a, a people's bank. But then, and, and then it was a nutrition store for a while. But then it, then it was torn down and this high rise went up. And I think the high rise going up was part of the philosophy that you hear in historic preservation that sometimes something has to go down to inspire something else to be saved. Well, during design review for this, the company that built this building was because they were tearing down a, a historic building, they were required to put up some art that would relate to West Seattle history. And you can easily miss this, but I urge you, there are 10 of these bronzes that Leslie created, um, three of them along California and seven along Alaska. And they're not, this, this makes them a, that, that, these are about life size, but they're dark and they're easy to miss. But of course, this is the Alki uh, Homestead Building, which used to be called Fur Lodge. This is the sort of the mothership of our Log House Museum on Alki. This, of course, is the Alki Lighthouse, 1913, that was constructed there then to replace a lantern hanging off of a branch. <laughs> Um, this is commemorating the Duwamish tribe, and this is commemorating the junction of streetcar lines, and there's a total of 10 of them. So um, we've got history all over the junction for you to look at. Um, these murals are a treasure. In recent years, there have been other murals that go up that have nothing to do with history. They're just an art thing. There's a, there's a pirate thing that's up at, at the five-way intersection of 44th and Alaska and, and Glen Way that I just don't understand. <laughs> and there are other things, uh, but, but just keep in mind that these um, murals were created as one of a piece. They were, the idea was to tie history together. And, and the only reason it ended is running out of some blank walls. And, and you know, Earl, you know, we all, we all have to move on when we're not able to, to, to continue on. So that's it um, for this presentation. I wish we could have walked around them. We actually could have, because it's not raining. But I, but I told Nancy it's probably too chilly compared to what we've been used to in the summer. And, and this way you get to see some things that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. So you said you had to leave, so. I did, yeah, and, and thank you, you so much. Do you have any questions? That's wonderful. No, I have a couple comments. So, uh, Paul Durkett is one of my best oldest friends, as is Leslie Jane. Her first park was Carroll Street Park yes. down there. Right, right. She got the rest of the business. Other questions? Um, how would I get my hands on a map of yeah. the locations yeah. of those? Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Write down my email and I'll email it to you. Okay. That map I showed Thank you in the beginning. You so much. You're welcome. I'd be happy to, to email you any of these slides if you want. Um, you know, all of this historic <laughs> preservation stuff, whether it's Thank you. Thank you. Whether it's doing a mural or whether it's uh, you know saving a building, it's all labor of love. You know, and when you read or hear about this stuff, please. Keep in mind that for every building that somebody's trying to save, there's easily hundreds of others that are grinding, being ground to dust by the bulldozer of development. You know, this is, you know, my, my mantra at the historical study was 
and still is, I think. We can't save everything. We don't want to save everything, but we've got to save the good stuff. So what is the good stuff? That's the crux question. And once you define what is important to save, then go all out to save it. Other questions? Thank you, Clyde. Very much. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.